Well, it's going Russell, live. Um, uh, uh, kind of like Calhoun is his last name? Uh, uh, his last name was Dunstan. He was is it live right now? Calhoun? His first name. I'm, oh, I'm gonna I think write it's that live. Down. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put quotations. I'm not guaranteeing that. I think it's live. I'm trying to. Okay, it's not memorized. Yeah, it's actually live. If you what? think it's live or what? Yeah, if you zoom in, that's on, better. On my, on my, um, on, on, my, on my channel? If you, oh, zoom, cool. if you zoom in, that's better. Ain't that cool? That's cool. So now, before Calhoun, who was it? Um, the, 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 well, let me see. I know that there you were Lindsay's with the last name. It's too low. Uh, four of them. Um, just that's raise the stand up. Okay. Let's stand raise up a little. Oh, Fanny, you can put on the chair. Because that's why you got the mm -hmm. long inky dinky legs. Like I'm gonna try to go back as far as I can. Like, you can sit on the middle of Okay, you can sit it. Uh, okay, it's great. All right. Um, I, I think since we moved, I, I, I don't see anybody else in there, but that's fine. Um, on this uh, special auspices day, we want to share as much as we possibly can to say shalom, Shabbat shalom to each and every one who's watching this live. This is a YouTube. I want to thank dearly, dearly the leads. And I want to be extra grateful that Azariah have been in Israel and Yahayam have been in Israel. And I want to thank and be over gracious. Now, the, the Almighty is working a mighty work with us. We're having a table discussion. And it's going to be about relationships. How our culture relates to our culture and how individuals relate to individuals and how we actually live and thrive in America. It's a word I kind of hold on to because I heard how I'm saying it. So um, we, we are blessed to be here. And if you've ever been in a hospital and you see people laying with uh, tubes and, you know, unable to move around and to do anything, you know, they're incapacitated. Uh, they need help. So we're not in that position. We're not being tied down. We are free to say we want to say. If folks want to get up and leave, they can, you know. Mm -hmm. And and we want to honor the living Yah because he said he said in his word he said the commandments his commandments are not grievous. So we stand upon the shoulders of our forefathers, and we stand upon the commandments of the living Yah Almighty. I'm grateful to him for my flesh and blood. I mean, how I see the generations coming. I did not have this when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Everybody was just around. <laughs> and, you know, and the, the cult was in culture structure. Mm -hmm. But we were family structure, you know? And so I saw my uncles and aunts and my grandparents and my, you know, and, and mom and dad and, and cousins and all of us, we, we were around each other. We spent that kind of time. And it's, it's vitally important to understand that no matter what the situation or circumstances are, I've had many, many friends in my life, not like, you know, close friends, but many people that I had uh, surrounding us. And, you know, people come and they go, but your family is eternal. And I say, I always say that, you know, family is eternal. I never look at family as finite. And, you know, family have their odds and their things that they deal with, but family is always uh, eternal. Mm -hmm. um, do me a favor, Azariah, could you get that lamp? No, that's fine. Just that lamp over there in that corner. I bring it over there. I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to plug it in. Uh, this uh, Shabbat uh, on the show, I'm going to say, I want to pray in a Hebrew prayer. And the reason why we do that is because publicly, uh, Yeshua Hamashiach taught uh, his disciples how to pray. And he did that. He did that teaching them how John taught his disciples how to pray. He said, when you pray, pray like this. And so we feel it necessary, we deem it necessary, thank you, that uh, we get together and we pray. We pray, bless you, sir. We, we pray as he said pray. Mm -hmm. And now you always pray in, in private. Mm -hmm. and but when you do a public prayer, you know, well, let's be reasonable, rational, and conscious of what he said. He said, when you pray, he said, pray you got like this. You got so, so uh, we're going to, okay, we're going to pray the Tafila uh, Ha Adan. We're going to pray the Tafila Ha Adan. And I'm going to start off, I'm facing Easterly, so I'm good. I'll just simply, and I represent everybody who is as well. We want to just simply say, Avenue Sabah Shamaim. 
Yet Kadesh Shimka. Tavu Malkut. Tavu Malkut. Ye Retsonik. Barakut Kashar. Neshaba. Shamai. You, you, Tenelu Hayam. You select Lenuet. We're going to simply say thank you, Eternal Yah. Our Abba from heaven, we glorify you. We have something that is fabulous, that we can actually touch each other with your truth. And we can walk in the light of your word clearly, your word. And we can debate, we can dispute, we can agree, we can disagree. But the love that we may have beyond is above and beyond, and it comes from you. So we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise at this time. And we bless you for us in the blessed name of the Yeshua, Ahamashiach, the eternal Christ. I mean. Okay, so um, in this discussion today, there's many topics that we have in our, uh, in our circle, of course, in our circle of family, in our circle of uh, situations and circumstances. And it's a blessing to understand that once you uh, look at certain situations, and topics, and I want to say this is probably kind of more uh, tailored to adults. Uh, you'll see that there is uh, there are things that we often uh, deal with that we don't a lot of times have the opportunity to do on a platform when there's a lot of youth around because we have to watch what we say around young people. We got to watch what we say around young people. So obedience is better than sacrifice. Uh, a, a lot of times when we attempt, thank you, my dear, when we attempt to uh, do things, to, uh, you know, uh, we attempt to accomplish things, um, we, there may be struggles. I have struggles all the time. The week before last, you, you're taking the lid off. Yeah, yeah. The week before last, I had a, um, I had a, a, a wasp bite on my eye, in the lower part of my eye. And so I went out the door to meet the, the uh, microwave guy. And he said, watch out, they wasp, they wasp. And the wasp came out of the light and, said, Zzz, and bit, my, bit me right here. Oh and my God. eyes swallowed just like this, uh, just like a kumquat. And so, which, you know, it was interesting. And so, you know, of course, I got a lot of sympathy that I didn't need or wanted. And so I simply said, no, don't worry about it, it's nothing. They said, they said, but we're concerned about how it looks. I said, I'm not concerned about how it looks, it looks you know. And, 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 you know, I wasn't in any remedial pain, but the fact that I got stung, you know, that's irritating because I could have avoided that. I could have easily avoided that. But what happened, happened. So, you know, and so by the time, by the time we came to do uh, the, uh, the channel, um, that was gone. I, I looked 20 years younger. It's almost like it was Botox from, from a wasp. You know what I'm saying? Like, Botox, you know. <laughs> And my skin was smooth, you know, and so on and so forth. And then one or two other things happened, you know, before that. So I went out the other day, and I got out on the porch mm -hmm. just to look, to walk, keep an eye on the kids. Because I always I watch the kids from all the windows. Mm -hmm. Y'all know that now. Now you know. I always keep an eye on them. You know what I'm saying? They're out there, and I'm watching in every direction. So, uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, what, what I did was I went out and I, I heard something and was the whole hornets inside the light again. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, we were out of our weapons. So I turned on this way to run back in the house and one got me right here in the back of the back. Like, oh, zzz, got me. This was the other day. Oh, no, so I, twice? This was another eye? one. Oh. One on the eye, one, one here. So what I did was I went and got a can of Coke and I had a smile. I got a Coke and a smile. I put the cold Coke on there and let it stay there. That sucker went down just as nice. Just went down gradually, just as nice. You can see, you can see. Oh, I'm, not, I'm not telling you what to do, but um. So so the, so the, the the bite went down. The wasp bite went down, mm -hmm. and and I felt a little better. So I went to the gas station and fell up because I thought that my wife was going on an adventure. You know, this showing you some of the little things that happen. So I come home and so there, there's a uh, there's a carpet in the drive. And underneath of the carpet was a metal scooter. So I rolled over the carpet and I heard something go, and it was a loud, you know, hit. And uh, I heard this, tss, and I didn't pay no attention. So I got up the car, went to come to the house, and, and the little grandson looked and he said, he said, hey, he said, it's leaking under there. 
I said, oh, have mercy, tell me y'all have a... And so he said, yeah, have mercy, have a... You know, because it was running, you know? So I went and got an apparatus. You know, I, I, when, when I have anything that happens, I usually like to operate very quickly. I don't wait. But, you know, can I do this? Can I, can I do nothing? I'll govern this money. So how things going to go is that we're going to save something, you know? So I, I, was thought, I thought of the gas, and I thought it was important that since I'm, since I'm going to be losing gas, I might as well put it inside. I might as well put it inside the, uh, something so I could use it for, for, the, for the lawn, you know, do the, the, do the grounds. So I looked at that and I said, oh, hold on. So I went in the office and I laid back in the chair, put my head back like, and I prayed. That's the first thing I did. I prayed. No problem. Came back. It was fine. Mm -hmm. I went and got that stuff, put it in there. Mm -hmm. No problem. Mm -hmm. Every attack that the enemy has is foiled. Mm -hmm. This one judgment, he foiled. Because as I told our, our son, I said, the goal is that some of the stuff sometimes you, know, you don't realize that will stop you. I said, mm -hmm. but the deal is for you to stop. And that's the, not to slow you down. It's to stop mm -hmm. from the mission that you're already on. Mm -hmm. It's to stop you. It's for you to be frustrated. Mm -hmm. I'm way past that, you know. I'll be 70, you know. So I'm way past frustration, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But it's irritating, you know, when things transpire like that. Mm -hmm. And here we are, you know, on this Shabbat. So, and I'm glad for the um, fellowship the other night of Shabbat and the food that was cooked. Sister girl was killing it. Was, was killing it. Boy. So they and they boy, I was like, wow, y'all. This is this is sister sister time. But in this day, in this uh, time of discussion, of course, we're going to look at uh, our relationship uh, to our uh, our grandparents and your grandparents and how you feel about your grandparents, knowledge of them, or, or I should say if you have any knowledge of your great-grandparents, mm -hmm. because I, I felt that was, that was an important thing to, to discuss. And then we kind of look down, you know, the, the train, because grandparents and great-grandparents, based on some of the things they've experienced and have gone through, uh, differ from the parents and grandparents that are today. You know, kids want to know everything about you. They want to know what, what you do, how you do that, where you get that, what time you go there. But, you know, they'll question. Like Macaulay Culkin did uh, an Uncle Buck. I don't know if you ever seen the movie Uncle Buck. You know, he, he drilled he drilled Uncle Buck for him. And see, and that's how our children are today, you know. When I was a kid, you sat there like a, like a uh, lump of toast. You kept, your, you kept your mouth shut. You didn't say nothing. And they did all the talking, you know. So that's where we get the term children fall through the cracks. I'm going to tell you now, here and now. Like Luther said, mm -hmm. none of my grandchildren fall through no cracks. Mm -hmm. I don't care what's happening. The enemy's going to always try to grab one mm -hmm. in every circle. Trust me. That's just the name of the game. That's how it works. But they ain't getting get my grandkids. Mm -hmm. Whatever situation, the circumstance he got plotted, they, that all has been foiled. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I don't sit around and say, well, I hope he turns out all right. Mm -hmm. I hope you know. That's why he puts them into our hands. See? Now, if I put a roll of cash into her hand, mm -hmm. and I say, God, you know, do what you feel like doing, bang. Mm -hmm. And I can't complain about what she does, am I right or wrong? But if I, if I point arrows in a certain direction, we know where those arrows go. Right. See, and so don't come to me at another point and say, oh, well, no. <laughs> see, now you, this is what it's like, huh? I just have a different, you know, slant on what you see and what I, what I see. Mm -hmm. But the deal is, I know that I can't be heavy with you because you are very sensitive. And I'm sensitive to the idea of how you may feel about the things that I do and what I say. So mm -hmm. I think that's vitally important. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so sarcasm takes another level. It has to. Because sarcasm is a, I don't know if you know it or not, but sarcasm is a good thing. And we have a new Dunstan in the, in the, in the blood. <laughs> you know, uh, we, sarcasm is a good thing. Sarcasm is a good thing because it allows you to be light and not to take everything so heavy. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You know, yeah, you, you can't, some things, y'all, you got to take with a grain of salt and say, you know, there's the rock right here. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to change the component of the rock. Can a rock be moved? Yeah. You know, if there it is, the heck with that, you know? It's, I'm not going to worry about that. That's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And stop seeing everything as if, you know, I used to tell the kids, all right, come on, we're going to get ready for church. Church. So they were like, oh, wow, we got to go to church. And they were like, dragon boy. <laughs> I said, but if we were saying we're going somewhere else, they would jump up. We would have to tell them what to wear. Mm -hmm. what to get. They would get up and get ready and be excited. And they would go. 
But when it came to church, they'd be there, oh, we got to go to that place. Like, we got to go there. They did not like, didn't want to go there. And my point is, you know, where you want to go and the things you want to do and the desire that you have, you know, you already propped and primed and primed for those things. So, you know, you're already propped and primed for them. So mm -hmm. obedience is better, you know. Obedience is better. It's better to do what you have been given to do. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to pose the first question. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to put it out there like this. How do you feel about your great-grandparents? So. How do you feel about your great-grandparents? Because you have some information on them, and the information that you have on your great-grandparents is vital. That's vitally important. It's really important because I'm going to let y'all share. I mean, don't, everybody don't jump in. And how does that relate to the scripture? I don't know my great-grandparents. I haven't um, looked into it. You go right there. So, okay. So, yeah. Never put my grandparents on my wall. Okay. Okay. So, let me ask you this because everybody was telling me from last week, y'all probably, probably recognized the voice. It's Yahashua. Because you read so well last week, everybody was saying, like, who's that? Who's that? You didn't ask me. I'm done here. Um, the relationship of your great grandparents, anybody else? The relationship, what you've heard about them, or how you feel about them, speaks volumes about you. Because respect when Sue and I was growing, coming along is different than respect that we see, you know, a lot of things. And, you know, a lot of times folks want us to do our grandkids like they did our like we did our kids. And the answer is, hell to the no, no, to the no, no, no. Because it's going to be a different love relationship with my grandchildren than it was with you. See, and that's just how it nails. See, that's, it is, nails meaning now. So, you know, and that relationship is going to have a bond that is so unshakable that it will defy detection. I mean, I don't care if my grandkids go to the moon. When they come back, they're going to know their grandfather and grandmother. Mm -hmm. See, I don't care where they go. Because when I'm on my knees, they talk about kinetic energy and it's a static energy mm -hmm. and systemic energy and all that other stuff. When I pray, I know that someone in the Almighty has got them or, you know, help for the purpose of their lineage. And lineage means everything because I shouldn't have had the sound of trumpet for my son to see that I am with my wife. And that's who I'm with. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's some duking you got to do mm -hmm. in order to defend the gate. Mm -hmm. But then I look back at my great, my grandparents, and some of the stuff I heard of my great grandparents. And I'm like, wow, you know, he did that, he learned that. And I, and I often ask myself, why, why is it that I knew that and my brothers and sisters didn't? Because they didn't give a dag name? You know, I'm just saying. That's my, that's my word for, for, you know, for the media. Hi, I'm. I would say that my... All of my forefathers are important, but when you talk about the great grandparents, you know, it helped shape the grandparents, and the grandparents helped shape the parents. My, my, my. The parents helped shape, helped to shape us. So, you know, we get to learn, and we do have, we have a culture through our lineage, through our families, um, that we inherit, I guess you can say. You know, um, traits, ways, how we stick together. How we, or lack thereof in some families. Um, having an intact family, knowing your, you know, who you come from is important. Like um, your family, Dad, they have, we know who our forefathers are. Like, every, there's records of our family members. So um, we know where we come from. And I mean, it's a blessing. You have to know. I mean, it's, you know, when I say you have to know, you have to know that it's important. Um, not just you have to know, sometimes you don't know. Like Josh was saying, you don't know, you know, the great grandfather. But all of them still help to shape all of us. My, my. Mm -hmm. My, my. And I like that too, because you see, like mm -hmm. you said, like even in your parents, mm -hmm. I know if I haven't met my grandparents or mm -hmm. great grandparents, looking at your parents, you're going to see, mm -hmm. you'll know something that's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. through that blood and, mm -hmm. you know, passed down mm -hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Ways, culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially our generation starting yeah. going on back. You know, yeah. it, was, it was just different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 1940, 1920, mm -hmm. 1950, 19, you know, mm -hmm. it was just different. Like, look at the grandparents today. 
they're getting younger and younger, you know, so. But yeah, ours was, our, our, the foundation is strong. Mm -hmm. like this, nothing could, could break that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just. It's, it's a culture it in our family. Mm -hmm. You know, we kind of staying together and not mm -hmm. being apart. Um, you know, mm -hmm. going through whatever you're going through, but still um, getting along and living life and working mm -hmm. things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard workers, too. Mm -hmm. my, I gotta my, add that my, in my, because my, my, my. the men in our family, mm -hmm. like, take care of their family. Y'all yeah, have my. really been like leaders and protectors. Yeah. That's all I heard about Pop Pop. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> he worked, provided, mm -hmm. gave my mom money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Same on my mom's side. Yeah, my Papa, too, of course. Yeah. He was a quiet man, but he, you always know, he was worked. always kind. But he was, always, yes. he was a worker. He wanted to yeah. make sure his wife was taken yes. care of. Yes. Mom would always say, "Hey, Dad would work. He would give my mom money. Mom would take care of the bills. Mom would cook, okay. raise the children. Home get house she was a homemaker. Yeah, homemaker. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah she wasn't running in the streets. <laughs> so we, you know, we come from a line of women. It's, it's a tradition. Streets. It's it's exactly. It's not just tradition. It's biblical tradition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know, it's true. not just any kind. Oh yeah, no, it's it's biblical. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what has always reigned in our family, mom, from our great grandparents mom. to mm -hmm. our grandparents to mm -hmm. our parents. Mm -hmm. you know. so, yeah. mm -hmm. so so now let me ask you a question. What do you see when you when you see, let's say for example your cousins and um, your, your extendeds. What, what do you see when you see, when you look at them? Well, what, what do you see, you know, when you when you use the term family? When you say extendeds, what do you mean? Like your, your first okay. and second cousins okay, so and third cousins. I can look at... Because like, we're looking horizontal. Okay, um, so... Da, da all right, so if I look at your siblings, it's uh, all the men are there. <laughs> In their families, everybody has their differences, but um, whatever family you come from, you know, you pretty much have the same ideals, mm -hmm. um, like the women too. Mm -hmm. They might have different, they might have be a, another branch of a bloodline, but they still have raised their kids, you know, mm -hmm. the same way, um, because the mothers are the ones that influence children mostly. My, my, my. Of course, the fathers do, but. Um, we have pretty much the same ideas about life. Yeah. Um, you know, we say we love the most high. <laughs> All of us do. Uh, we strive to be righteous in our ways. <sighs> you know, be kind and, you know, the, the basic thing that we should be to people, you know. So, because some families don't have that. You got some people that's mean. And that mean street run and run and run. You know, everybody's mean. They're known to be mean people. You know what I mean? Um, so, I haven't seen that. I mean, I know you mentioned maybe one had a mean streak, but that was a female. <laughs> I don't uh, know where her, who her that, kids were that, or if she had kids. Dur I don't know. During the time, um, mm -hmm. there was a lot of, you know, I was looking at the uh, Kabbalists and mm -hmm. looking at the Cabal and seeing how witchcraft mm -hmm. with the Masonic order mm -hmm. and with the, uh, also with the, uh, the Illuminati order, the original Illuminati. And I was looking at Smith and all the things that he set up mm -hmm. in terms of how he wanted that organization to be. My mm -hmm. brother-in-law, who's a Muslim, who was a Muslim, mm -hmm. and he's finally found his roots mm -hmm. in ours. Mm -hmm. And he uh, he uh, he had a book. The book was about that thick. Mm -hmm. So that information inside that book was to say something about a culture. Now there's a lot of witchcraft that are, is in our culture uh, mm -hmm. by uh, uh, volition and abolition. Mm -hmm. Volition means in a way where voluntarily uh, there are people who decided, hey, I want to have a little witchcraft in my family. Mm -hmm. And that has uh, been pervasive in a number of families, but it hasn't dominated mm -mm. ours. Mm -hmm. It has not dominated ours. These are the more pliant and loving sisters. My sisters are, are the best people I want to be, be around, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I, I can't understand nobody, you know, having any type of avarice with them because mm -hmm. they love their families. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about my sisters. Mm -hmm. We're looking this way. My cousins are the same way because mm -hmm. we went to uh, Uncle Mitch's, um, you know, the, the, the mm -hmm. thing right there, mm -hmm. Memorial. Mm -hmm. we, we, um, we stood and talked and the way we talked to each other, the way we looked at each other, you know, and we, like we knew know each other when we were dweebs. Mm -hmm. And here we are now there in their 70s and, you know, we're communicating. Mm -hmm. And, and we were on the kitchen talking with Sheila and Sam, and, and, and everybody knows everybody. And they're, they're looking at the internet and they're seeing who's who. And it's important because 
a lot of times, like you said, when you have that one seed, isn't that interesting how you mentioned that? You thought about that. And only you would. Only you would. <laughs> that one seed was very dangerous and ended up in the hands of 422. You know? Oh, yeah. And so uh, what happens a lot of times is nobody wants that type of bitterness <laughs> and, uh, and loneliness and emptiness mm -hmm. you know, and distance. But they ne you never know that you're going to end up lonely. Mm -hmm. Empty and distant until it happens. Mm -hmm. But you know, some are fortunate to have others say, "Come on." And so we was like, "He will take that witch in your house." I mean, you know, we we, we was against that boy, you know, and and we set up a little ant army. Uh, we did. I'm gonna tell you the truth, you know, we, we set up a little ant army. We fought, boy. We fought that resistance was there, you know, and it was January the sixth. Mm -hmm. and we went in on the Capitol, but we went in on the White House. I, I ain't going to lie to you, you know. And the funny thing is this. Um, my parents were really compassionate towards us during this time. Mm -hmm. Really compassionate, you know. And uh, it, it's, it's a funny thing when you think about it, how uh, they really didn't reprimand us. You know, they, they weren't upset with us. Because they, they, I, I believe they knew that we had every right. To, to have a resistance mm -hmm. towards what was in the house at the time, you know? Because this person was accustomed to whatever that person wanted to do and say whatever that person wanted to say. And, you know, so, but when we saw this person break down, mm -hmm. we knew we had won. We <laughs> talking little kids, you're like eight, nine years old. That's, that's dangerous. But we had to do what we had to do in order to take back the front, and that's what we did. And it's sad, but everybody else, we would have never had that problem with none of the other family members in the, you know, in the family yeah. over something as silly as that. So I, I think that's important to, to uh, make mention. Now, in terms of what you don't know about your grandparents and great-grandparents, um, every day, you know, there's, a, there's a passage in the book of James that backs it up. Every day you look in the mirror, and the scripture talks about when a person looks in the mirror, they behold their natural face. Mm -hmm. They look at their face in the mirror. And it says and when they walk away, they forget what manner of person they are. When they walk away from that mirror, and that's true. That's why some do it in overload, but they yeah. but they, they keep their lives pretty circumspect. You know, they keep their lives pretty circumspect. And when you look in the mirror, you're actually looking at those people. Mm -hmm. so you're yeah. actually looking at those people. You know, I was I was a, a young teenager when I actually saw a picture of my great grandfather. Wow. Well, I saw him because my cousins and the, the nieces and nephews, they said, they were passing around the family saying, don't, don't Uncle Dave look just like him? You know, they, that's what they were saying. And, and I said, and I hadn't seen the picture, but we heard. Like Jim. And so, yeah, Jim, Jim Johnson. And so we heard about, I heard a lot about Jim Johnson. A lot about, I heard a lot from, now remember, my, uh, my great, great grandmother was the one that spent all her time. She was full native. Spent all her time, you know, trying to make a place for her granddaughter because she had to take care of her granddaughter. Mm -hmm. It was her. She was the one because okay. her granddaughter did not have a parent, oh, yeah. had no parent, you know, she had no parent. So now how different would the relationships have been with my great, great grandmother at that time than it would be maybe today? How, in terms of marriage, you know, the relationship between man and woman and family. Because remember, my, my great-great-grandmother was a Lindsay, and she wasn't a slave, but she worked on a slave farm. Oh, okay. That's how they earned their so-called keep. And my, um, my great-grandmother on my father's side, they, they, they both were about the same age. They might be the same, who knows, from the same family. But... Um, she didn't work at all on the farm. She had 16 to 18 children, if I'm not mistaken. That's a lot of kids. From her womb. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot of kids. Native, that's a lot of kids. And uh, many of them survived. And I would be somewhere and they would call my name and I didn't know who they were, but they didn't recognize me. All the way up until the time, I think the last cousin, uh, age-wise, that has passed, because, um, 
I think Emma is the last one, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't want to call names, you know, because I don't mean no, no put you out there, cuz. But anyhow. And and uh she's like 90 now. And I saw her at the fellowship. I had the opportunity, to, you know, to uh, say something there as we uh, eulogized one of my other cousins who was 84 when he had passed on. But um, in the year 2000, we had a lot of family members and friends that passed away, you know, from, from they say COVID related situations. And a lot of them have passed away for a whole lot of other reasons. Mm -hmm. But all the family and friends that have passed away over the past couple of years has really been a very, very subtle impact on what the scriptures say. How, how would you relate? Let's say, uh, how, would you, how would you relate in your mind the relationship between your great-great-grandmother and your great-great-grandfather from the story that you heard? Related to what? To them relating to each other. Oh. To them. How, how, how do you think that time was? And how could you even have a glimmer or a glimpse of that, that time? What would it look like to you? What would that look like? It really depends on the time. So I have to. Which what time are we looking at? We're looking at the eighteen. Right, we're looking at before Abraham Lincoln, like eighteen, like eighteen fifty-five. You know, eighteen forty-one. My my great great grandmother was born around that time, and she knew Lincoln. She knew Lincoln. My grandmother's mother died when uh, around the, her birth of her child. So she had to be born around 18, I guess maybe 18, uh, uh, 60 some, you know, 67 okay. or something like that. So they they knew oh, yeah, Lincoln. They, they knew Lincoln. So this okay. so this is my survey. Around the time, when you look at the time. You, you you can look in the history books, yes. and you can see how people lived and you hear the yes. stories mm -hmm. of what they did in the past. Yes. And you look at the location. So yes. you're doing geography. Yes. You're doing a history check. And you're also doing a sociological check. And you're doing an etym uh, etymological check. And the reason why I say that is this. Most of our families during that time knew the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they were intimate with the Lord. He was protecting them on that, you know. Always. Yeah, all the way, all the way, all the things they had to run through and dig, and dig into. They were protected to that point, to where they were. And it was easy for them to fight for that front, to make sure that those who came behind them knew that it was a fight. Mm -hmm. But now, how do parents today, and then I want to ask that in terms of relationship, how do parents today, I mean, because like I said, if you look at the history, and you look at the geography, because my, my um, family, mother and father, was in Virginia. My mother and my father. Are from, my mother's from Danville, Virginia. My father's from Petersburg, Virginia. Danville, Virginia. And Petersburg, Virginia, straight across uh, uh, where Alexandria, Virginia, across. I traveled through Alexandria, Alexandria, Virginia, many times when I was in the army. I catch the Amtrak train, and I was, uh, you know, when I was in Virginia at Fort Lee, I was, I was stationed at Fort Lee, Virginia, and I would travel from Fort Lee uh, to Philadelphia, you know, Philadelphia uh, station. So, um, thinking back, how do you think? those parents would have related to their children today. I'm going to tell you a story about my, one of my grandmothers mm -hmm. when they were small. Different, different how? Just a different time, like just it's basically everything. Like I can't even point out one in particular. We're talking about the times, right? Yeah, we're talking about the times. We're talking about the times. Completely about how different. To their children. Yeah, how, 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 what do you think this, this substance of the relationship would have been with their children at that at that time, in the, in the 1800s, you know, and how we deal with our children. and how we deal with our children today. I don't know because I, I think I think sometimes as parents now we look at the way that we were raised and we try to do things differently with our kids, mm -hmm. but we notice similarities with our parents while we're doing that. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't. I think there would be That's differences, good. but I think there's a lot of. There'll probably be some similarities that pop up, <coughs> whether it's in how we react to disobedience or where, you know, how we handle the children yeah. there. But I feel like it probably would have been Slightly. more strict back then. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And what do, what do you think in terms of like environment, key 
living conditions, food, you know, travel, things of that nature. How do you think that 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 would relate? The air was better during that the time. The air was better during that time. Right? Think they, 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 didn't, they wasn't running back and forth to the doctor. Oh, my butt hurt. Oh, my toe hurt. Oh, I broke a nail. They weren't doing all that. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they were in good shape. The food. The it food. Wasn't a lot of that's that's right. Yeah, that's right. Food. That's right. Well, well, no. You know what? Go ahead. They grew trees and stuff. Wow, they sure did. So I was all looking, of them had I had to look up something real quick. Like uh, that's great. My uh, my husband's. Hold on, let me go back. So his great great grandfather was a farmer. Oh. And oh, interesting. But I think it was a sharecropper. So he. Do, do we have a point? Because it reminds me when the, the Pharisees went to uh, the man. They said, yeah, so, um, how, did you, how did you receive your sight? And he, he said, hey, my son, let me speak for his son. So, who did it? Who did it? Go ahead. So, um, my point is, they grew, they grew food. That's what I they did. What talking about. My so, father did the same so thing. They ate Her the, father they did. They ate the food. Right. You know, they ate the fruit. Right. Um, right, in the, right in the backyard. It didn't was, have to um, be. There was trees, like, when you grew up, mom... There was fruit trees around. Fanny, all through the, all through the big house. Fanny uh, was telling me that she remembers the muscadines they used to pick wow. from the tree when we were little. Wow. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the trees, even though it's not as far back, but the trees we had in the back of our house in North Carolina, we had uh, pears. Wow. We had pear trees, so I would eat the pears. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what it was. I ate, but, um, you know, eating from the fruit of the ground that the, the Most High yes. gave us to eat food mm -hmm. from, and not eating, there wasn't as many processed foods today, um, where we have a lot of preservatives in it, a lot of chemicals um, that are created and that we consume. Mm -hmm. You know, even the when you make a cake from scratch, mm -hmm. if you get a box, one from the store in a box, it's way more ingredients, unnecessary ingredients, you know, but it's just to keep the shelf life of it. So um, we're, we eat this stuff and then we get sick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we don't really know the root. But it's usually with what we're eating. But I'm sure they were healthy, more healthy than what we are. Even right. if they Cause, died young, because the air. Yeah. You know, the, the, I went in the military and I, I joined the Airborne Infantry, and you know, it's like I couldn't understand why I, I had apprehension about it. But when I would breathe, the air was different. The air up there is not like the air down here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like what is this? It's almost like, like it's a whole other. You know, set of octane functions. Trees. Yeah, it's like, that, what is what is this? Is the air is sweet? You're talking about the air where in the sky. <laughs> you know, I'm saying, like, what, what time? It, it, like, during the time when you're skydiving and you oh, breathe, and you yeah, breathe it's, in, it's, like, it's a different quality. Yeah, right, you don't have to do no extra breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 have full control. You know, of course, until you break atmosphere. And so, you know, you know, when you break atmosphere, you don't have to say control. <laughs> of course, yeah, you have to use guideposts. But anyhow. It's like, wow, it's like the air is weird. Now, how do you feel about fast foods today? Because uh, they didn't have fast food. They, they didn't have McDonald's. They taste good, but it's not good. Uh -huh. They don't even taste good. It's bad. This chicken is good. Okay. Toxic. <laughs> All right, everything. It's toxic waste. Okay. Right, fast food is toxic waste. Toxic waste. Yeah. waste. Yeah. What what about if you're real hungry? You gotta grab something to eat. Ain't the right answer, right? Most of yeah. I grab is French fries. Yeah. yeah. The safest thing you know, I grab is French fries and uh, potatoes. See, like on lunch breaks, I used to go <laughs> and I said, "Look, I'm gonna go down here to uh, Mackey D, and I'm gonna get that steak, egg, and cheese biscuit uh, to steak, egg, and cheese bagel." And yes, I did. I went there, and after a while, I said, "No, I'm not gonna be eating that that much over here." Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that that thing was good. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. lie to you. Man, they went out of the way to make that. But I, for the most part, took a lunch with me. But still, you ain't gonna get home. But so now you say it's a lot of toxic things. What's the best fast food? You would say that's no, a fast food. No, no, that's the one of the worst ones. They got blue chicken. Their ingredients, their chicken ingredients, is this much. Wow, that's it's good. Blue yeah. Uh uh. <laughs> now, now I'm gonna tell you. I don't know if y'all know it or not. I worked at a place when we first got down here. They got got here. And um, it was a um, it was a, a package company, a food package packaging company, and that was before they got the robot in there to operate. We, you know, I went in there, and so I said, "Who are these?" Uh, they had packs of jelly, you know, packs of mayonnaise, you know, all these stuff in packs. I said, "Where are they going?" So they said, "Oh, this is going that that box is going to McDonald's. That one's going to Burger King." I said, oh, "Y'all make all of this stuff right here?" They said, "Yeah." 
Yeah, at Golden State Food. I worked at wow. Golden State Food. Oh, yeah, Food. I remember that. Yeah, right off 138 in Congress. And uh, I said, all this stuff is going to the... I said, so all these stores are getting the same stuff from one location. <laughs> and I watched the dude when he mixed the jelly up and did all that stuff. I said, I couldn't believe that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you get this. This is a proven fact. Mm -hmm. The ice in all the uh, fast food restaurants, they say it's dirtier than toilet water. I, I believe that. I believe that. I believe it is toilet water. The ice? Yes. Yeah. All the fast foods. It's dirty in toilet water. Stop, 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 stop. The ice. I believe it. I believe it is. I believe it is toilet water. I believe they're using toilet water. I do. It's just too much, Mom. Now, we we are when we look in the mirror, we are, you're looking at all your ancestors. Now, I always go by the I always go by the the uh, the two four uh, sixteen eighteen method. I don't know two four six eight eighteen sixteen method. You ever heard of that? Yeah, it's a methodology that is used when they do DNA, and they do a um, it's a uh, your, your two parents, mm -hmm. your four grandparents, mm -hmm. your eight great grandparents, mm -hmm. your sixteen great great grandparents. So that your 32 great 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 grandparents and then your 64 great 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 grandparents see and I know and that's something you know 64 great 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 grandparents 64 that's a nation so it's interesting how you're taught that you don't have a nation or you don't have a country or culture or people you know but you do how do you feel about statistics, vital statistics today, and the stuff that they want you to believe? So they try to, you know. Some of it is, can be pretty accurate. No, I, want, I want the brothers to answer Some something. Some is inaccurate. Uh huh. For the information that you get. Can I just say this real quick? Go ahead, go ahead. They put the percentage out there because, number one, people don't do their own research. They, they, they depend so on it. So they just lie. People, they know people just won't believe they it. They depend on that. Yeah. They depend on that. Now. Okay. What do you think those bureaus do? <coughs> Statistics are important. I did this. This is my second time today. The, uh, those statistics are important because if you look in the mirror and you're looking at your yourself and you're actually seeing 64 people every time you look in the mirror, you're looking at 64 actually human beings. It's a bunch. 64. I'm not talking about the ones past the 64 mark. I'm talking about the ones exactly at 64. Excuse me, y'all. The ones exactly at 64. You're looking at the 64 number. Now, there's a passage in Genesis chapter 10. I'm going to ask, thank you, my dear. No, 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 thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. Uh, that, that, that one's king. That one was uh, That one is king. Uh, anyhow, the 64, the 64 method operates like this. I want somebody, could y'all read Genesis chapter 10? I, I didn't bring my, my space, my space. Genesis chapter 10, I think started verse 2. That's why I said when I went, when I always like, you know, the brother reads. Thank you, Phil. The 64 method. Each time when, you know, when James says in the book of James, when it was chapter 5, he talks about a man beholds his, his natural face in a glass. And the manner of man that he sees is the manner of man that he is. And the scripture says, don't think higher of yourself than you ought to think, but think soberly. Yeah. You know, in other words, you ought to be sober thinking. Mm -hmm. Sober thinking means you're the rational, sane, and cognizant mind in the midst. Mm -hmm. See, you, 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 everything is practical. You don't jump to conclusions. You don't jump the gun. You don't jump the broom. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand the relationship to practical thinking. And each time you look in the mirror, that you actually have a 64 tier. Looking right back at you. Now, somebody start reading for us, please. It's Genesis chapter uh, 10, starting at verse 
I think too. You can start at one if you like. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, right now, I couldn't see it if I wanted to. You want to read it? No. Okay. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog, and Madai, and Javan and Tubal, and Meshech and Tyrus, and the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Riphith, and Tagarma, and the sons of Javan, Elisha, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dadim. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, mm -hmm. everyone after his tongue, after their families and their nations. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mesriam, and Put, and Canaan, and the sons of Cush, Sheba, and Hebelah, mm -hmm. the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan, mm -hmm. and Cush begot mm -hmm. Nimrod. Mm -hmm. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Most High. Now, isn't that interesting? Nimrod. Has anybody ever called you Nimrod? They got angry yeah, you. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be a sarcastic slur. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't it interesting how you start off with Japheth, you, know, you listen to Ham, and Ham, Japheth, and Shem. Okay, you know, we're, we're Shemites, yeah, I know that, right? Don't, yes. don't, don't make a mistake about that, yes. all right? Mm -hmm. DNA, everything's been done. All work's been done. You, you get, it, get it from every museum. Mm -hmm. Even Vladimir Putin is talking about y'all. Mm -hmm. um, the actual 64 tier, look at what it does. All those people that it named, all those generations that it touched base with, got all the way down to Nimrod, and then they talk about Nimrod. The Lord himself said he was a mighty hunter. He was a great man. Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord. Nimrod, he's one person. Now, in America, because I, I won't see this in any other country, I have many, many friends from other countries. I'm at school with many people from other countries, colleges and universities from other countries, and so forth and so forth. Notice in this uh, U.S. of A, United Snakes of America, do you notice that they capitalize and magnify the individual? Y'all know that. They capitalize and magnify the individual. Notice when they speak about their mystic mysticisms. Notice in their mysticism, they never talk about the unity of family. All mysticisms and all religions are designed to individuals. It's designed for you to find yourself and to know who you are and where you're going. And what you do and what you eat, they ought to respect you. And mm -hmm. You, you, you know it. You know I'm not making that up. You know all all religions are designed that way. The, the microcosm function of religion begins with the central individual there, and that's what we did in, in America. So who's the who's the magnificent person here? It's Nimrod. It's Nimrod. Not the 64 people. See, this is part of 64 trusting tier. Not the 64 people in the generation. No, Nimrod. But if he did not want us to know about those other people, why would the Almighty name those people? Why would he name those people? It's, they, they, it's important. No, it's important. That's important. Where other, you know? That's important. Mm -hmm. so, when you, so when I look in the mirror, all those 64 people looking back at me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we are who they were. Yes. We are on the earth who they were. Now, I believe it's Hebrews chapter uh, uh, 12. Somebody turn it up for us, please. Hebrews chapter 12. We're looking at the relationship of family, the relationship of, you know, in marriage, the relationship of children and the relationship of offspring. And it's probably important to understand. You gotta, you gotta the understanding is not very really difficult. If you look at the passages of scripture that speaks, you have a different outlook when it comes to business, when it comes to work-related situations, and why today, it's particularly here in the U.S. of A., why we are different than our parents who lived here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And our grandparents who lived in the U.S. They, they were more interested in the unity and the binding of the family. Family meant everything to them, man. They had, not, they had nothing else to live for. Like, uh, like uh, Alicia and her song, you know, we are all we got. Yeah. 
That, that, they lived that. They didn't talk it. True. They lived that. They, they wouldn't break that bond, would not be broken. Do you hear what I'm saying? I don't care who came along, but that bond is not going to be broken. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like an established, you know, an established point. Go ahead, question. A lot of times when the grandparents die, like, and the family's left, and there's no leader, it kind of crumbles after that. It, it, why? It's, it's just like the movie Soul The standard's not held when, when the grandmother died. Mm -hmm. I mean, in America, I know that happened. Yeah, it's like the standard. It's like the the um, standard left or the what is the word that? Um, There's a glue that keeps. The yeah, the glue. <coughs> the glue. Um, and it doesn't happen to every generation. It might be. Yeah, I yeah, said, yeah, because it's kind of like somewhere something happened. It's the foundation. So the foundation was weak. You right. Know what I mean, right. so it was like it was on sand. Right. Yeah. So why isn't it that when, when a grandparent or great grandparent passes away, and they do, like I miss my mother and father, I miss, I miss them I miss, people, I miss and, and see them. when when they go, what is it in the generations that are coming up that somehow or another it appears that they either care or they do not care? I think the standard, you know, like the foundation uh, is uh, important. Yeah, foundation is important, but a standard still has to be held. So and that means that. The, if you lose the quality of that, I guess you can say, then it kind of deteriorates with people. Um, you have also societal influence that causes some that, things that's, to break that, down. That's a huge part yeah. of, so of the you, breakdown. Yeah. That's a huge part. Mm -hmm. That's a huge part. The huge part of the breakdown is the society. Yeah. Because yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't all that TV and radio crap. Look, everything is artificial intelligence. And if whatever is put out, that's what people are receiving. You know, people don't have the spiritual. So in, they're in the flesh, so they're taking in all this information, music, television, right? What they had said is it is the influence of society. Now you have uh, Hebrews chapter 12, the influence of society is, mm -hmm. uh, is the problem. Mm -hmm. so, if I, so if I drink enough of society, what is, going, what is my mind going to be like? Society. Right, like the world. right, right. So I don't want a divorce. But the person that you looking across the spectrum that is drinking all the society, what's going to come out when the trouble comes? Society. You, why? Because the Lord hates divorce. I'm just using that as a metaphor. I, I don't want to. I don't want to do what He hates. I fight to do what He what He loves. See, that's how that's how come you know you ain't going to nothing get hurt here. I'm speaking in a whole new tongue. I don't want to get nothing hurt here. You know, it's a good thing to be obedient. The benefits are outweigh anything you can imagine in your natural mind. But I also understand the thing of vessels and weaker vessels and vessels and so forth. So you have to understand what he says in his word. What is he saying? What is he saying? Is it important? Because my great-grandparents had a foundation that I want to make sure that that foundation comes from the word. Go ahead, read that uh, Hebrews chapter uh uh, chapter 12, I think. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Somebody read that for us, please. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, wow. let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Yahweh the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shames, and is set down to the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah, we're talking about Yahweh Shah. His lineage. He, that's the, the 64 tear. Listen to what he says. You know, now that we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses, who's he talking about? Does you, anybody know? Who's he, who's he talking about? The, um, the, the ancestors. The ancestors! Those who have gone on. A greater cloud of witnesses? Are you crazy, nigga? What do you mean they're not here? Where they at? We're compassed with them. A great cloud of witnesses. So it says, let's, let us, hold fast. You know, hang on. You know, it used to be a song by Frankie Valley. Let's hang on. You, ever, you probably don't know. You Google it. Frankie Valley, no more seasons. That's very old. My Uncle Doc used to like that music. That's why I remember it. But anyhow. Yeah, so it's important to understand. Now, understanding the relationship, how they related, and they didn't have all this stuff. They didn't have TV. They didn't have a flight. They didn't have a computer. 
they wasn't tech connected to the super network highway and all yeah. that stuff. So they were able to sit and talk mm-hmm. with their offspring. They were able to yeah. sit down. Yeah. They weren't so consumed yeah. by social media. That's true. And they were able to put their arms around and say, come here, little Negro, let me yeah. talk to you for five talking, minutes. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the difference. Mm-hmm. I shared with the grandsons, particularly the great grandsons, made it very clear to them. I said, notice, I said, notice how your adrenaline level rises mm-hmm. when you get that two-hour on Saturday junkie fix. Mm-hmm. You get that two-hour drug on Saturday and you're all pumped up. So you're living for one day in the week mm-hmm. for just two little lousy hours. Mm-hmm. I said, you know what, that's going to make you the fool that I'm looking at right now. And I said, it. Yeah, yeah. oh, y'all was kind of harsh and hard. At first. Yeah. He's harsh. You're darn skippy, I'm harsh. Because mm-hmm. somebody out there, they they, gonna, they love you so much, they're going to wrap their loving mm-hmm. night stick around your neck and give mm-hmm. you a good hug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I told them, I said, you need to have the same adrenaline fix if we're going to use that as an example. Every day. Mm-hmm. All day long. Because when I was a young kid growing up, I used to look at my parents and say, wow, you know, I had questions about life. I didn't understand what was going on. And I didn't know, you know, what life was about. But I looked to them to be there, you know what I'm saying? Whenever I came in the house, I looked, I looked for them to be somebody I can, you know, reach out to. And I didn't have to worry. Y- y- are y'all understand what I'm saying? They were there. I needed that. I needed to have them there that made the difference. That's what the tear of family when you have the two. Then you have the four. Then you have the six. I'm sorry, I'm sorry the, the two, the four, the eight, uh, the 16, the 32. The, 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 your, crowd, your cloud of witnesses. They're right there. Your cloud of witnesses. Uh, does anybody have anything they want to share? Because I, well, I want to look at one other thing. I don't know how we look on time. I, I, we good. I always ask if we good on time. But looking at the relationship of Matthew uh, chapter 1. Look at, turn to the book of Matthew chapter 1. If you can pronounce all those things, that would be that would be wonderful. It's important that you realize that all those ancestors, you know, when people talk about roots, we thought it was a joke when they did the wow, thing. Yeah. And, and they're interested. We're all oh, roots, yeah, ha 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 ha. We really did. Didn't realize that. Th- th- duh. Well, and speaking of roots, um, I was reading in Numbers that they were calling upon the sons. It was like thirteen fathers. John, son of Nathan, son of Abraham, son of Jesus, son of... I was like, oh my goodness. Wow. I mean, they just kept going back. Wow. The father, they were wow. telling you where you come from. Wow. And I was like, you know, so that's where they get from. Yeah, because that's what... We ain't had no last names and stuff like that. I mean, that. what you need for? It was the father yeah. of David. Right. You know? I mean, that was your last name. <laughs> that's, but they tell you where you come from. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. You know, it tell you... It give you a, a kind of an idea, you have a, a good brain, idea. You have a good idea, you have a bird's eye view, and some of the things you do, yeah. you don't even know, but a lot of it has to do with some of the things they did, yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah. you doing it too. Yeah. I'm talking about way back. Um, you know the saying, people say, um, you've been here before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's like the spirit, it's a familiar spirit. It is. I don't care how. Familiar is familiar. That's look, what mm-hmm. I say. I don't care what yeah. I teach my children. What are my children going to learn more than anything else? What you do. No. Right? No. Oh, no. What are my children going to learn more than anything else? I don't know. Don't matter what you teach them. It's something they're going to learn more than they learn what anything you do. else. Yeah, no, 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 no. No. Oh. Nope. What'd you say? I mean, what? Nope. More than anything <laughs> else. They're gonna do this one thing. I don't care how you, I don't uh, care how you try to design it, how you try to dress it, how you try to fix it, what you think about it, who told you this or that, okay. and take this from somebody who knows this part. I don't know everything. Mm-hmm. I'll help you all out so that you can live with yourself. Mm-hmm. One thing that every child takes. Mm-hmm. Look at me and look at your brother, mm-hmm. and you should hear the way the communication between his, his nephews and all. Mm-hmm. They say, hey, you're, "You're my man, Papa." <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, I sound just like him. You know, I talked to him a certain way. What you really was hearing was me. Right, right. See, right. I know what I'm talking about, right, baby. Right, I know what you're saying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not golf ball jack. Yeah. I understand yeah. what that that's, be. That's where, this, that's where the scripture, when it talks about regeneration. Wow, yeah, yeah. wow. That scripture wow. that wow. talk about wow. regeneration, wow. you look at what that means. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Regeneration over and over. Yeah. Right. You, you, know? you, you ever read, with yeah. regeneration, right. you ever see a TV program 
Do you ever see a program where you see at the bottom, they said uh, um, the, the, the thoughts and views of this program may not necessarily be that of, of the producer. Yeah. You ever, you ever hear when he said, yeah, he said, viewer discretion is about right. yeah. Because he's my son, that don't mean I believe everything he believes. Right. Exactly. You see? <laughs> because when you grow up, you have other influences. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You have other influences. You are, he's not me, yeah. but they become you. So if they become you, what makes you think that your parents, that you try hard not to be like? <laughs> so you're looking at Dave Dunson Sr., mm -hmm. almost the whole compositor to do, mm -hmm. except he was this tall. Yeah. You're looking directly at El Zora, mm -hmm. directly. Not what we said and what we did. You take on who they are. Mom sounds like her mother. All the time. Now, did her, her mother teach you that? Did her mother her teach you ways, that? How she turned around. But, it, but how it's just she like moves. what Dad said. That's why. I, that's why I'm talking about regeneration. She is her mother. They'd be like, oh, you look just like your she dad. She is her oh, mother. Just like your mom. People, family members say, you look just like your mom when my son was little. You know, it's just, yeah. just like Lena. Oh, I thought you were I mean, your mom. It, Lena, you look just. Yeah, you know, it's so very it's, strong too. It's very strong, strong with mom. I'm yeah, like, good lord, mom, what in the world? I remember my grandmother, and I see mom. I'm like, you you right here. Yeah. I tell you that. The way you move, the way you talk, how you do things, your mannerisms, turn it around a certain way. Just like Ellie. <laughs> Ellie is Aunt Miriam. <laughs> That's Aunt Miriam over there. <laughs> so you, you, you literally are. Because Aunt Miriam is her parents. Right. You know? right. So that right. dad got the same parents. Right. So, you know, so there's my, there's the parents. Sometimes yeah. Sometimes even things that's like you wouldn't expect to be hereditary. Right. Yeah. Like like I know on my mom's side, a lot of them got tempers. Mm -hmm. And those are it's like, dang, is that is that something that's hereditary through that side? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Where everybody on my dad's side is real chill. Yeah. Wow. Like, you know yeah. those, those wow. type of things that pass down like yeah. personality. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 you so you really are not what you learn. And and you know what you you become you, them. You are not your own. You really that's not your what the own. scripture you're means. Like a that's what the scripture means. Yeah. You're not. you you now. He says you're the temple of the Almighty. That's right. And you're not your own. That's right. And you fight in America oh God, trying to be somebody else when you're not them. You're not them. You're not that. You're you. So much do do gets in us. That's why I like Charles Osgood's book. You know. Fit bodies, fat minds. <laughs> that book is good. You know, we got more junk. So the moment we, the, the first thing something goes wrong, we want to know how to, how to uh, well, name an actress. How, how would Halle Berry? Uh, that's the first that? person I thought about. See, the, uh, see, the thing, <laughs> see, because this is the level of what they brainwash us to do. You start making choices based on the junk that you're filled with. And then you wonder why you can't get answers. Because you're not praying. You're yeah. doing the doo doo right, that right. you're eating. Right, right, right. See, and so you're not you're not reciprocating great things for better things. Right. But the more you weigh in on who they were, yes. in His Word, mm -hmm. and how He has called you, you you have awakening. It's like a, it's an awakening. Yeah. There's another aspect like, to that. You know, I always talk to my sisters about how mine has always been a kind mother. And I'm like, a lot of times I'll be like, if, will my mother do that? I really think about that. Will my mom do that? Like, I'm influenced by my mother. My, my, or I'll be like, my dad would never. You know, I, I think about the things you do. We're influenced um, greatly, especially when you are a strong influence. My, my, my. You know what I mean? You know how the Wi Fi, you got a, a strong signal, you got a weak signal. But with our parents, you know, it was a strong Very signal strong. with dad. Yeah. Because dad was like in, in it. Like, he was a dad, he going to tell you, he going to push you. I was telling her something. I was sitting down with her. So I remember him sitting with my older siblings, mm -hmm. you know, having a good time running around, and they getting lectured about something. Um, you know, then we got we got For we got hours. Bible study. We didn't get the lecture, Two, but we got yes, the Bible we study. Some I, time. I got a personal lecture before. <laughs> we did I got lecture. a personal lecture before, and I, I wasn't trying to hear it at the time. But you know, <laughs> I still so ready deceived. for this day to this day. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, but um, it's yeah, you take what your parents are because you are. Me and my husband we talk about this all the time. We are our parents. You it are is what it is. Whether you, you like it, or it is what it is. As hard right. as you try to twist your own right. arm, we are there. I, I ain't never gonna be like him. We are there. I ain't never gonna. Be, I ain't never. I ain't never. We have to pay yeah, attention. Yes, yes you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, you are. 
yes, you will. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, you will. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Yes. And there's a reason for that. There's yes. a reason for that. Yes. There's a reason for that. Yes. What what is if if you remember anything that, that you learned in math, what is the what is the shortest distance between two points? A to B. Right? Straight line. They got straight line. But how come in America we don't want no straight lines to nothing? We're, we're conditioned to not say yes or no. Me and my husband talk about this too. Wow. We ask somebody a question. Well, you know, I went to the store. It's like, did you go to the store or not? Mm-hmm. You know, we're conditioned to have all this, this junk. Instead of saying yes or no, we're con- we really can't answer yes or no. We feel like we have to go through all these ex- explaining and, and this twist and turn because we're worried about what somebody might think about it. Mm-hmm. Or we want to explain because I don't want you to think. We worry about too many things. The Bible says that you yes, be yes, and you know, be no. My, so, my, you know, it's, it's another conditioning. Mm-hmm. That's why we, we, we don't move in a straight line. Mm-hmm. But if you're mindful of it, mm-hmm. then you can start acting it, you know, practice. Because you can practice something yes. and get better, right? Yes. You know, you can. like a lifestyle. Even you, though you we can. are our parents, right. there might be something in there that shouldn't be. Right. You can show But if you correct, if you can my, pay my, attention my. to it That's and say, you know what, let me not do that. Now, how important is that? It's vital. It's vital. That's the biggest. That's the biggest thing. Yes. That's the biggest. Let, thing. let me that's let me be mindful that's about how I thing. act because yes. I don't want to sow that seed. My my my. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. Now, have you ever heard of Jane Elliott? Okay. Is it an author? Okay, yeah, she's an author. Okay. Jane Elliott's a Caucasian woman that says how white America is oh, messed yes, up the minds like of her. black. Yeah, yes. I, I like her. Her work. Yeah. I mean, I've been accepting her books. Yes. Yeah, it's it's very interesting how she brings it. I, I, I don't want to get into it any length, but I think y'all should like peep some of the stuff she's wrote. Oh, yeah. She's and she gets ta- invited to a lot of uh, shows, too, you know, mm-hmm. to speak on how um, the the brainwash and all that. She breaks it down like a black like a black uh, guy does, but you gotta, you got to either watch her or, or read some of her excerpts from her book. You, you'll find out that the relationship of a person, you remember the, uh, the apostle Shaul said, Paul said that, um, he said, uh, be not deceived. Yeah. Bad company corrupts, corrupts good morals. No matter how good you are, if you have a bad apple in a bag with apples that are not bad, That's those bad. apples are going to go bad. Mm-hmm. It's not that they might, they will. They will. Yeah. They will. Don't tell me you're going to eat a fast food every day and you're going to be healthy. <laughs> I mean, that's a, it's a mental de- deception, you know what I'm saying? Somehow or another, being deceived in America is a way of life. You know, well, I don't have to do this. I don't, you know, don't tell me what to do. You can't you don't understand the best thing in the world for you is authority. Almost definitely. That's the best thing in the world. We need it. We Preach, girl. You have to be you, you have That's to. exactly you right. You don't. Right. Yeah. You know, nobody twisted nobody's arm, but since you want to be a fool, I'll sit and watch the show. Because yeah. in my mind, oh, okay, well, I like entertainment too. But I like it live. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. understand that our 64 tier, our parents' parents, went through life. Now, I started to tell y'all something about, about an uncle in the situation. <laughs> so I, I Daddy! Right. But anyway, I'll, I'll tell you after. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, when you sit back and you see that there are things that can be straightened out, you need guidance for that. You need guidance for that. You need guidance. Need guidance. I like the way James says in the, in the book of James. He says, even a, even the owner of a horse takes a bit and puts it in the yeah, horse's mouth to turn his head in any direction. He said, but oh man, we should read the scripture. I'm getting chills now. But you know, he, you know, but, but people. <laughs> I I remember it, this man going to work. And when he had to operate machines and stuff, he was cool. He would do his job. He would outperform all his all the other employees on his job. He would he would go through whatever line he had to do. He would study things like a basic science, yeah. and he would get he would whip his stuff off. And they would look at him like, "Dad, he did that. He didn't need any help. You know, no guidance. He didn't need no supervisor over yeah. him. No, yeah. you know, because he's got a built-in yeah, supervisor, right, right. and right. everybody don't have it. That's a call. That's an anointing. So when you have a built-in supervisor, then you're listening really to everybody. You ain't got no one person telling you nothing. But this idea, that you, but but if but if you've been eating and drinking fast food, you're mentally not going to be healthy. You're going to have sludge. It's kind of like you know um, having clean arteries and and having your cholesterol levels and being balanced. Um, even people with mental problems have chemical they call it chemical imbalances wow. where we wow. eat chemicals. Wow, boy, that's we, that's we a set mouthful. ourselves off. We have dementia because 
We've been eating chemicals. Wow. Yeah. You know, Certainly. dementia was not around right, right. until Ooh, what? The me, last, what, 100 me. years? 200 maybe? Uh, uh, uh. You know, that didn't even exist. Wow. So It's like certain foods lead to Alzheimer's, dementia, mental, because what we eat, it goes to the brain, because y'all know when chemicals. we eat. Chemicals. Yeah. Um, it's just like um, can- cancer. That comes from what you're eating. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, you're, if you basically make yourself toxic. Yeah, we exactly. cancer cells. Of course. We just make ourselves yeah. toxic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we're eating the chemicals from mm-hmm. the, the instead sugar, of eating the sugar, the sugar attacks your white blood cells yes. yeah. 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 yeah you want you to mess it up too bad yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to mess it up too bad sometimes it's too late you know your body's not going to heal from that mm-hmm. but then sometimes you can fix it you can correct it mm-hmm. you know but you, there's also a way to not even get it <laughs> so <laughs> and and, that, and I don't know why that route is my favorite. Mm-hmm. I like not getting in trouble. Yeah. I like not coming I, I, short. I like not having a hard time. I like not being in a fight. You know, not not that I like ease and comfort because I do, but <laughs> but I don't want that to be a, 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 a prototype for every time I have to do something. Yeah. That's why when something breaks down or something goes wrong yeah. or something happens, I always connect it to other things quickly. My mind quickly goes to a myriad of other things. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, this could have been avoided here. Um, um, it's kind of like um, self-accountability. Wow. You know? Wow. I understand that things happen, even somebody can be mad at me, whatever. There's a root. So I, I always it. look at myself. I like, okay, it. how could I have, what could I have done better? Wow. Because if I had done this, then I'm sure that wouldn't happen. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Now, that's a gift. Mm-hmm. You have it. Everybody don't have it. Mm-hmm. Because I'm prove it to you. He could work well with machinery and building things and moving things fine. Yeah. But when it comes to people, that's a, like a another biat. Well, Dad, you know what? I'm just learning. <laughs> I got to deal with this guy. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? I got to deal with her, you know? You know I'm how like, how this, the machine functions fine. Mm-hmm. But now I got to deal with this. This idiot got mental problems. Yeah. And it's on the job with me. And I got to somehow or other curtail my way around him before something happens. That's, that's, that's not safe. But that's America. Go ahead. I start at myself because I always want to make sure I'm in order. Because if I'm not, then okay. So yeah, let me correct it. Gift. And at the same time, I can't be mad at nobody else. Yeah. I can't be mad. I can't be, you know, angry towards anyone. So you I'm take, like, okay, you take you know full what? Let responsibility. Let me take responsibility. You know, I, okay, I could have done some things different. That I always look at that. And you always taught us to take the high road. Take the high road. I don't blame people for nothing. My, my, my. my. You know, I never my, do. My, my. It's always me. <laughs> and then I go through, it's always a root and a cause, you know, to why. Mm-hmm. It's a domino effect, mm-hmm. you know, one thing cause and effect. Mm-hmm. This happened because this. That, I mean, the Bible even tell you. I also, can I interject? Mm-hmm. Um, that's very true, I agree. We all, mm-hmm. we know that. Also, um, when sometimes when things happen, because there are certain scriptures in the Bible, I think of Job a lot because he was a God fearing man, and those things happened to him. Mm-hmm. It didn't just happen because of the things he was doing. Yeah, and I'm saying yeah, that to say yeah, sometimes yeah. some things happen so the Most High can bring you through right, something you know for a certain outcome. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah. things don't happen. Yeah, sometimes things don't happen. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. Things don't happen, right. You know and, and Josh he uh, expounded yeah. on that for me, mm-hmm. um, and he was like, "Babe, things don't always happen right, right. because of something you did." Right. You know, he's like, the mo- "Maybe the Most High, you know." So. That's true what you said, and also we got to think about sometimes things happen because the Most High wants them to happen. It's not because of what you do. I couldn't get your attention, Adam, in the garden. Yeah. So I let you go because yeah. you, had, you had an appointment that you didn't make. Yeah. And since you didn't meet that appointment, Adam, something happened over here that did not have to. Mm. You didn't make it happen, but yeah. you were at the wrong place where yeah. you should have been over here. Yeah. See? Yeah. So yeah, now I got your attention. Yeah. Right. We can, you know, we can go over but it's always a cause. There's it's always, always a cause. Yeah. A purpose. Because mm-hmm. we, we really saying, don't go through nothing for nothing. For mm-hmm. but you know, some purpose things purpose can be avoided, mm-hmm. but then there's some things that we have to endure. You have to endure. Like, what's that story about the blind man? He said um, it was a reason why he was blind for that. You, you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. And Howard yeah. Shire was like, um, he... He healed them so, and that, said, so, so that the works of Yah yes, might be made manifest yes, in him. Yes, like yeah, yeah. that man ain't yeah. gonna do nothing in his life to mm-hmm. be, you know. Because the disciples asked Yeshua the questions, and 
why was why was this man born blind? Yes. Is it because his mother sinned? Yes. yes. Is it because his father sinned? Yes. And he said no. Yes. He said that the works of God you. might be manifested yes. in him. Yes. So, so you think about that. The line he come from, mm -hmm. he was born for that. Yes. <laughs> my, my, my. Exactly what I mean. it, it's a simultaneous, it was a yeah. simultaneous meeting point. Uh -huh. Here you got Yeshua Hamashiach, yeah. and you got this man who was before time and eternity predestinated yeah. to yeah. meet yeah. at this right time. Right there. Exactly. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. wonderful. That is great. Mm -hmm. That is great. Wow. That's the purpose he was created. Exactly. Right. Wow. So there's always and that's a what and that's the point I'm saying. Like the day you say, mm -hmm. there's a purpose behind all of it. My, Sometimes my, it's yeah. not because of the things. Yeah. That yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, it's for yeah. His purpose right. and His will to be done. Um, because sometimes yeah. I, I just want to say, right. I beat myself up. I I I um I sow a lot of good seeds. Yeah. I try to yeah. as best yeah. as I can. You mm -hmm. know. Um, I, I think it, I used to beat myself up when stuff would yeah, happen. Yeah, be like, yeah. dang, like, and I'd be thinking about like, what, what did I do? Like, yeah, Father yeah. God, what have I done? Yeah. I've done this, I've done that. That you know, we find ourselves doing that. That's why I wanted to bring that up. Um, also for the audience as well. Um, and but you know, if you're doing being wicked and unrighteous, things are going to happen and break down. But if you're doing everything according to scripture, mm -hmm. you know, no man is perfect, but we can be made perfect in the most right. high through, uh, through, through the word, the, 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 word, the Messiah. Yeah. But um, I want people to know that if you're doing everything you're supposed to do as far as righteousness and keeping that relationship with the most high, sometimes the most high just want to put you through something so that you can pass that test. It's not always something you've done or bad seeds you sold or... We, should, we shouldn't always look back and be like, what have I done? You know, like, you know, like King David says in, in, in the Psalms, um, what did he say, Dad? I was glad that I was afflicted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he said it was good, good for good. me that I was afflicted, yes. that I, I might, might know, know him. Yes. Yes. He said that was good for me. Yes. <laughs> and so that's why anybody shooting yes. arrows in judgment, yes. they, if you if you're trying to shoot them at me, dear friends, right. you're shooting at, at mm -hmm. the wrong dude. Because I'm, yeah. I'm I'm like the Teflon Don. Mm -hmm. It comes back the same thing, mm -hmm. you know. Because I realize that you can't beat me a bit more and better than I can beat myself. Well, another thing, Dad, we have to, you know, how Galatians uh, 5:22 talks about wow. the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And the scripture says we are given a measure mm -hmm. of faith, right? Mm -hmm. We build upon those things. Mm -hmm. We build upon your patience. When you were younger, when I was younger, I might not have been able to tolerate certain things. But as I got older, I experienced life. Now I'm able to tolerate this. I'm able to tolerate that. Mm -hmm. I become mature in this. I'm, I, I, where I wasn't mature, mm -hmm. I, life experience um, helps you to grow in those areas, mm -hmm. you know, and for you to be able to exercise them more. Because we are born... Um, for such a time as this, yes, you know, when, yes. wherever we are in life, yes. and we do uh, have to uh, exemplify the Most High. Yes, mm -hmm. the Scripture says there's no law against that. Mm -hmm. You know, the fruit of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. There's there's no law against it. Mm -hmm. So you can give that to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you can show kindness to anybody, patience, long suffering. You know, these things we go through, mm -hmm. and um, be content where you are. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Be content and uh, eliminate pride. Cause that yeah. can happen. Mm -hmm. I went through that when we had the situation. You know, we sold our house and we moved and all that good stuff. But I dealt with pride because it was like I've always done well for myself, and now we, we here we are. Mm -hmm. I ain't got to be here. I literally said that to my husband. I ain't got to be here. We ain't had to do this. Why? Why? I, I, you know, I went on and on. I dealt with it. But because I've dealt with it, I understand it when I see it mm -hmm. <laughs> in somebody else. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can have understanding right. of where that understand. person's coming from. Yes. And I can be able to have compassion. Yes. Because when you go through things, when you have understanding, understanding is everything. Mm -hmm. You have to have understanding in order to deal with people. Mm -hmm. If you don't have understanding, that person can be coming to you yelling and screaming. You yell and scream with them, but if you have understanding, you hear what they're saying to you. Mm -hmm. So you can try to understand, okay, what's going on? What's wrong? Right. You know what I mean? Um, but that's another thing about the fruit of the Spirit, having patience with each other, being kind to one another. Um, Self-examination is the first place we're supposed to look. Like Fanny was saying, you have to look there first. Mm -hmm. So asking the Messiah, okay, is this something that I've done? Okay, let me look here, here, here. Okay, Messiah, mm -hmm. well, you know what? You will be done. Mm -hmm. Either way, you know, if I have done something, if I haven't, if I have, okay, I want to turn away from it and 
might not might have been something I didn't do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, most time I'm gonna go through this. I'm gonna learn patience through this. I'm gonna learn kindness. I'm gonna learn to love. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that I he can be uh, glorified and um, exemplified. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's important. Gotta look at yourself. Can't blame nobody else for nothing. Good. I look at your self-examination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now you know. I, I, I want to. I don't know how much time we got. We, we, we got a minute, <laughs> close, but I, you know, there's four things I want to kind of real quickly look at. I always ask that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's four New Years that are celebrated in the Hebrew culture. Mm-hmm. There's the New Years of meat or, or animals. Mm-hmm. There's the New Years of vegetables, mm-hmm. you know, veg- vegetation, and there's the New Year of the king that is celebrated amongst the people. People have a celebration in the year of the king. Um, one's in uh, uh, Elul, the other one's in Saivan, another one's in Nisan, and the other one's in Tishri, where we are now. And it's the New Year's of the people. And then all Israel celebrates the New Year of the people, and we call it Yom Tere. Uh, uh, the Feast of, um, the feast of uh, Unleavened Bread, mm-hmm. they, they have considered that. So, you know, Ha Yaim Matzah. Chagai Matzah is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And, and the relationship of those new years are years that they feel deem important to us as a culture. And not to, you know, not to omit any of them, you know, but to look at all of them, to, you know, combine. But I, I want to share with y'all, you know, in court, in a court of law, uh, you never hear a judge use the term accident. Oh, no, no. Never. No, you'll never hear that in a court. Mm-hmm. You'll never hear the word accident in a court of law. Because according to the law, there's no such thing as an accident. According to the law, there's only negligence. Yes. <laughs> You'll always hear that word in a court. Yep. Never, they never, well, you know, people be talking about, yeah, well, it was an accident, Your Honor, you know, and, you know but it, the accident would have happened. But the judge, that, that word never mm-hmm. comes out of a judge's mouth. Mm-hmm. Because negligence is different from the word accident. Mm-hmm. In so much that negligence means it's connected to something that you did or did not do. Mm-hmm. So that holds the person who is, you see what I mean, the, uh, the, the plaintiff, uh, mm-hmm. the, not the plaintiff, the, uh, yeah, the, the, defendant. The, the defendant, and the plaintiff, somebody's being held accountable yeah. for what took place. Yeah. And so in a court of law, which they get the law from the Judea, Judea, uh, Judean law, if you understand the way law works and understand the way things function, you will be a little more responsible. Yeah. And understanding that those 64 tier family members are vitally important for us, you know, that even though we don't know them, you look at them every day when you look in the mirror. Oh, yeah. oh, you, know, okay. you, you, you see them every day when you're in your action. Mm-hmm. You are, we are them. We are who they are. You know, and it's not like we're removed from who they are or we're remiss from anything they've ever done. But we have a generation, a genealogy, yeah. and that it leads straight back to the Messiah himself. Mm-hmm. And we are fortunate. Mm-hmm. Everybody cannot say that mm-hmm. in society. Yeah. In common society, practical society. Mm-hmm. Now, back in the day, they used to have a thing called jumping the broom. <laughs> and so it's different yeah. from what now. That would be the way. Right. Why do you need the, the laws of the land to tell you who you are and where you're going? You really don't. You know. Mm-hmm. But, but, Just but, witnesses. And yeah, but, that, but you, need, you need witnesses because yeah, witnesses. witnesses solidify a covenant. Oh, right. Yeah, you, you're a witness to a covenant. That's the difference. Mm-hmm. So the difference in a contract law is a piece of paper. Yeah. But a covenant, because we are in a country. Where our ancestors worked hard, mm-hmm. and what they've done over the course of time, they have taken contracts oh, yeah. and make you sign them, oh. f- fix them to what they want them to be. You sign the contract, they'll hold you up, but they'll break it any chance they get, and they'll break it whenever they need to break it. Go ahead. You're right because um, in our some of our bloodline history, on your, on your side, some of them weren't legally married. You know, they but, weren't legal according to them, but everybody knew that's my parents. Right. Like, you know what I mean? That's who they're according together as to the right. parents. Right. Well, yeah, you know, so uh-huh. um, this according to the scriptures, what you need is what you need. So you know? so what's what's the deep connection between a covenant of marriage and a contract of marriage? What, what, what's the, what, what is really the objective? You should know. So, the PK. Contract so it's is, kind of like, so this is my, here my proof. Maybe, but Some to who? Need. But to who and for what? I mean, the contract is for the government because they want to be in your business. Yeah. So then that means that when you say contract, <laughs> yeah. you're talking about kingdom. Yeah. Because remember Yeshua, mm-hmm. Mary's line they say was connected to the Hasmoneans. Mm-hmm. That was directly connected to David, King David. Mm-hmm. 
and on both sides. Joseph's right? line was connected oh, yeah. to the covenant, the yeah. contract. Yeah. So when you talk about covenant and contract, you're talking about kingdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the kingdom. Yeah. See, you don't need a covenant because that's what people are doing nowadays. And then Yeshua Hamashiach said in the last days in Matthew chapter 24, mm -hmm. he said in the last days they said that we, they will not marry. Refuse they will to refuse to, yeah. right. In other words, huh, you don't tell them that. This defiance, yeah. this practical, natural defiance. Yeah. Um, you're right because they they won't solidify what the partnership or the relationship is. It's like either you're a spouse or you're not. But now it's just, oh, I'm just with him and he's a financier. It's like, that's not how the scriptures tell us, mm -hmm. teach us how he's supposed to be. Now, you, you remember the Marvin Mitchell case in California? I don't. Yeah, he said this is not how he wants it. Wants it. The Marvin Mitchell case. Uh, where it says, uh, you know, uh, common law marriage. Oh, yeah, they took that's it away. It came, that's where it came from. They yeah, had, then they took it away. Uh, this is the deal. <laughs> when you talk about contract and covenant. Yeah. The, the, he gave Abraham what? What did the father tell Abraham that well, about his feet and where it steps? It was a covenant, right? It was a covenant. What did he tell Ibrahim and Sarah? He told Sarah about and Abraham. The land? He said, every way is. your feet touch. Yeah. All right? And what did he promise David? What did he promise David? Come on, come on, PKs. A kingdom. You, you can't have a kingdom without land. Yeah, you can. And you, see, I mean, you know what? Speaking of that, can I say something concerning our people and the historical aspect of that? Heritage in the scriptures, they were talking about land. Not a piece of pie by and by. <laughs> So our people are conditioned. You know, when I get to heaven, well, the scriptures ain't talking about that. Right. First of all, there's no such thing as the kingdom of heaven. My, my, my. Not when I get to heaven. My, These are the heaven. That's been that's the been kingdom of heaven. They've the even made have, cartoons like that. Kingdoms have people. <laughs> my, and my, my, my. <laughs> and rulership. So he promised Abraham and Sarah land. Yeah. And he promised David a kingdom. Right. See, he's not cockeyed. He does things in order. So, 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 contract so here, things. it's not, no, you ha you can have that here. Right. You, we're supposed to have that. Right. Right. You know? Right. It's covenant. That, oh, you know what another thing is? And it's contract. The, the other thing is, mm -hmm. America knows the Bible. Yes. That's why they want everything written down. Right. Because they know what the word That's is. That's exactly right. That, this is right here, covenant. That's a covenant. That's a contract. That's a too. contract. That's right. It's like, okay. They know. They know what right Because well. contract, you agree to it. My, my, my. You know what I'm saying? Mm, mm, so, mm. yes, I agree. And sign, sign of the scripture. dotted line. Yeah. yeah. I agree to and you the don't, and, and we're about to close. You don't know. Mm -hmm. You didn't know that when you go when you apply for a job and then you fill all those papers. You're not You're not filling papers becoming an employee. Mm -hmm. You're a contractor yeah. working for the person who's yeah. running. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he can get so FICA, he can get FICA trade. He can so FICA when you say, and pay you his say, taxes you say, with your income tax. you do that, you say, yes, I agree. You take it. That's what you right. do. <laughs> when you are when you're, when you're, when you're <laughs> You say, I'm going to give you something else. Don't tell me. I'm going to do what I need to do with this right. money. So, and I'm going to allocate it how I need it. That's allocate. exactly it. Don't tell me that ain't so, slavery. That's the highest form of slavery. Form. You pay me nothing. You take my tax dollars. Then I have to pay FWT the exact same tax as a, as a FICA 200. You made me wait three weeks to get my first check. After yeah. Work for yeah. That, yeah. that is crazy. You know why? Because they, take, okay. they take your money and they put it into a gratuitous earnings. You know what that does? Mm -hmm. It compounds yeah. the interest of the money. Yeah. So when they, 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 they take your money out, yeah. they, 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 they earn something. Yeah, they didn't check. Mm -hmm. And they done made this yeah. off of your money. Just like the bank. They take you know, you have, do you know they will withhold your money? Yeah. They withhold celebrities. Money withheld because the man, or not even celebrity, you got a certain amount in there. The man wouldn't take his money out of the bank. I think it was a million. They wouldn't let him take his money. Wow. They weren't done with it. Wow. That, so look, it wasn't look, look at the control. No, that wasn't done with it. Now your mom they said told him you had to take a two or three days before he. Your mom it. said a couple of days ago. She said that's a part of the curse. Uh -huh. They're still you yeah. exercising it on us. Mm -hmm. They're still exercising. Come on, y'all. We're about to cloud. Yeah. About to come and sit in the cloud, okay? Uh, <laughs> so I want to just say I'm glad that you know um, that we all got together and we participated, of course, in uh, this. Um, this uh, endeavor, having this conversation, this talk is really rich. Mm -hmm. And even though, you know, I had four or five other things I thought would be good that we could, you know, 
kind of get into, but I think we did. We covered this very well. Okay. I love the way, you know I mean? It's just not naturally handled. It's a blessing. Yeah. So I want to just blow this uh, so far. I saw my brothers on the uh, internet. <laughs> and, uh, anyhow, I started to make a joke about that, but I can't do it. <laughs> Blessing for the family, peace, and power to the 12 tribes of Israel spread across the land. And that we may be gathered together being obedient by coming together as one. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, fam. Thank you, all, John. So, Ellie, what